Hello friends, today I want to take you through the effects I use to add shadows and highlights to my Prince John drawing here that I created in OpenTunes to make it feel more three dimensional and just look more complete. And there's quite a few ways to add shadows and highlights to your drawings. Some are simpler than others, but they all have their advantages and work better in different situations. And I made a video to show some of these that you can see in the card above and in the description below. So let's jump straight into it. So here on my timeline, you can see I've got four columns. The first one is the background column. Let's turn off the preview mode first. So the background column is just a bit of a painting to give a bit of a background to the character to stand against. And we've got the character column, which is a sub X sheet. And I'll show you that in a second. And then we've got the highlights and the shadows columns. So if we go to the character column first and step inside the sub X sheet, you'll see that's made up of three separate columns. And ordinarily, I draw the lines and add the color in the same column. And I recommend that to most new users, especially if you're using the default brush. But here for this drawing, I used a pencil brush to give it more of a scratchy look to match the original animation. So I drew the lines in one column here and then added the color in a separate column which I added using the brush and the paintbrush tool and finally I added the text for the sign in a separate vector level so I could resize it and use a more appropriate front that I thought would look nice on the sign and to make working with the effects easier I collapsed these into a sub X sheet so if I step out of here You'll now see that it shows as a single column on the timeline, which makes working with the effects much, much easier. Then I've got the highlights and shadows columns. And if I show both of these, first the highlights column, and you'll see I've got some orange painted around the crown here and around some of the fur on the back of the prince, and then some white painted over his costume and over the sign. And this is to kind of give it a kind of glow on the edges as though there's a light behind the prints. And you'll notice that I've painted these highlights uh, not only on the coloured areas, but also hanging over the edge. So I wasn't too concerned about drawing outside of the paint that's already down there. And I'll show you why when I use the effects in a second. Then the shadows. And again, happy to paint outside of the lines and outside of the colour here, just to place the ink down where I wanted it and to not be concerned about keeping it inside of the edges. I tried to pick out the areas that would be in shadow to give more of an effect of, of three dimensionality, which I think worked really well in the end. And if I just show you the preview for that and how it looks with the preview on, compared to having the preview turned off, and the ink as I applied it to the drawing. Now when you're painting uh, your shadow and highlight colours in this way and using the effects to apply them onto your character, one tip I will give you is to go into this drop down box in the column header and bring down the opacity of the entire shadow and highlight columns so that as you're painting you can see through the shadows that you're applying to where the edge of the lines are and where the character is to, so that you can keep your painting inside the lines where necessary it makes it much easier when applying the color and that change in the color won't be applied into the final render unless you tick the option in the scene settings dialog up here in the x sheet menu the tick box at the bottom here enable column color filter and transparency for rendering if that's not ticked that change of transparency doesn't uh, affect the final render so it's only useful when you're painting but it's very useful as you're painting okay so let's jump into the schematic room here so we can take a look at the effects that I used and there's quite a lot of effects here in the schematic don't be put off by this and one big takeaway from today's video is that I didn't add all of these effects at once. Nobody ever does. You apply them one effect at a time to try and give one additional effect into the output and just build them up until you get the final result that you want. So where did I start? So we've got the three input columns on the left hand side, the highlights there at the top, the shadows at the bottom and the character in the middle. 
So the first one that I added was the matte in effect. And you can get to these effects by either pressing the FX button. And you can search in the dialog here. So I could type matte and they can get to matte in, out and the visible matte in. Or if you right click, you can add an effect here and the matte effects are in the matte section, matte in. So I added the matte in for the purpose of making the shadows appear only on the character. So by plugging the character column into the matte, it means that the shadows and the highlights when they're plugged into the source will only appear where I've drawn ink or paint in the matte column that's plugged into the matte input on the effect. So that means that when I show the effect, the shadow will only appear where I've added ink and paint in the character column. So if I show that without and then with. So it mats those highlights and shadows onto the character. So that's the first effect you definitely want to use when building up your shadows and highlights effect series. And then I knew that the shadow and the highlights didn't want to be using the full colour that I'd painted with. So the shadows I'd painted with black. You could choose to apply a bit of a colour in there. So if the light source is uh, slightly red or the character's near a fire, you might choose to paint with red or orange onto the character or some other colour altogether. So I use the transparency node to bring down that black to a lighter colour here. And if I select the transparency node, I've docked the effect settings on the right hand side in this panel just above my head here. And you can see the intensity here is set to 75. If I bring it to the very top, so that's 100% transparent, you can't see the shadow at all. And if I bring it down to zero, you can see the shadow with the color that I've painted of black. So adjust the intensity to get the darkness of shadow that you're after. And 75 seemed about right. So you can click into the box and type the number or drag the slider to find the value that seems about right for you. So the effect is slightly transparent and it applies that as a matte in onto the character. Secondly, I added a blur effect and it's only one millimeter blur. And again, if I zoom in to where the shadow is, it just makes the edges slightly, slightly blurred and slightly less sharp. So if I bring this down to zero, you'll see how it looked before. So all the lines are really, really sharp. And that's kind of okay. You don't need to add a blur, but it just adds a little bit more of an effect, I think, by blurring that shadow. And if you go larger than one millimeter, so if I go to two or to three here, you can see the edge is getting less and less clear as I go higher. So there's 10 and you can barely see the edge of the shadow there. Even though it is slightly applied, I can see it around the wrist here and a little bit around the edge of the hand. If I bring this back down to one, where I had it before, you now see quite distinctly where the shadow is, but it's got that blurred edge, which I think makes it slightly more realistic looking. So I'm happy with how that looks here. So that's the shadows, it's got transparency and blur, and that's matted in to the character, so it's placed only over the character. Secondly, we've got the highlights. And for that, I used the same sort of thing. I used a matte effect, so the highlights are placed only on the character. So if I look at the collar back here and turn off the preview, you'll see that I painted the white line going over the edge. I wasn't concerned of going outside of the lines. I don't need to be because I knew I was using the matte effect. And if I turn that back on, you can see it's locked into the character here. And I used the transparency again, again set to 75. But obviously you could choose a different value if you wanted to. So if I bring this down, you can see the edge of that is now much, much whiter and it is on his arms as well. And by using the transparency effect for both the shadows and the highlights, it allows you to see through whatever color you've painted, which is then merged with the color underneath. So you can see for the shadow, it creates kind of a dark blue color because of the blue of his cloak. And again, for the highlights, they're kind of a lighter blue color, almost looks cyan here because of the blue of his cloak and then the white of the highlight. So let's bring the intensity back to where it was around 75. And again, I'll just type in the box 75 and press enter. 
So that's matted in the transparency. And this time, instead of a blur, I've added a glow effect. And I've plugged in the input of the column to both the light and the source inputs. And then in the settings here, you can see just above my head, I've set the blur to three millimeters. Because again, I wanted a bit of a, a blur. I didn't want a too sharp of an edge. So let's change that down to zero so you can see how it looks without any blur. You can see just a strong painted white line, which I don't think looks as good as having a little bit of blur. So three millimeters seemed right. So I adjusted that around until it just felt right for what I was trying to achieve here on the painting. And then that is combined with the transparency of the mat to place that over the character. It's worth mentioning, of course, that the character is a sub X sheet made up of the lines and paint for the character and also for the sign and for the text for the sign. So it's quite subtle. You might not notice it, but I've also applied the shadow and the highlight onto the, the pole that Prince John is holding here, which makes it again feel more three dimensional, more, more rounded. And also onto the edge of the sign itself. So some highlight across the top and left and some shadow across the very bottom and right. Very subtle amount and you can see a little bit here as well in the cracks between uh, the breaks of the board. I've painted some shadow into those places as well and underneath the board. So if I turn that back on, you can see a slight shadow under here on the pole and between those cracks. It's all very subtle but it adds to the feeling of the three dimensionality of the character and of the sign here. And the final effect that I added were overlay nodes and that's just to ensure that the highlight lines are drawn in front of the paint of the main character. So I've plugged in the highlight uh, output into the foreground of an overlay node and this node is in the effects again and it's the layer blending INO. Is a layer blending I layer blending without the INO that has a number of overlay nodes, and it's got an actual over node. And you can plug in multiple columns, an infinite number of columns into that, to place them over each other. But I only wanted a foreground and a background, just the two columns. So inside the INO, we've got an over node overlay here, and that only has two inputs of a foreground and a background. And that serves two purposes. The first one is it's really clear what, which column, which input is going in front of the other because one's labeled foreground and one's background. So you can see here, I've got a line from the character as the background and from the highlights goes to the foreground. So the highlights will be in front. And the other reason is because I used this uh, exact project to demonstrate how to create a macro effect. And I wanted to be sure that all of the inputs had connections so that when I created the macro, you could see exactly what is plugged into each input. But if you take a look at the macro video, you'll see exactly what I mean. I explain it more there, but more on that in a few minutes. And then the output of adding the highlights onto the character is then pumped into the input of another overlay node as the background to the shadows. So the shadows are placed in front of the character. And then that is simply plugged into the X sheet to give us the output. And then separately, we've got the background node here. So that's a quick tour of this project. I hope you found it useful looking through the effects that I used here. And if you'd like to look a bit deeper into these effects, you can download this project by becoming a supporter over on my Patreon page. And you can see details of that down below in the description. And I'd like to say huge thanks to Maria and Robert for supporting me on Patreon. Your support really does help everything I do here on the channel. And so, if you'd like to know more about the effects in OpenTunes and Tahoma 2D, then check out this video just here. Or if you'd like to see how you can turn all of these effects into a reusable effects macro, then watch this video here. You'll definitely learn something new that you'll be able to use. And that's a guarantee.